What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here, and today I'm going to show you how to create a uh, face filter, a face paint filter style thing um, in Spark AR, and this will let you upload to Facebook AR as well as Instagram AR since they're the same company, so you can actually upload to both at the same time. Um, before we get started, I'm going to give a quick shout out to Todd M. Thank you so much for becoming a channel supporter. If you want to support this channel, click on that join or thanks button below. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is download the Spark AR Studio. So let me go ahead and open this up here. We have Spark AR here at sparkar.facebook.com. And you just want to go ahead and uh, download now. So you click on download now, and it'll let you actually download the software application and install it on your computer. Once you've done that, you're going to open up Spark AR, the latest version. And you're going to be given uh, quite a few different types of templates. I'm going to go ahead and skip this one for now since we're doing a tutorial right now. Remind me later. And um, all these different templates are different things you can do within Spark AR. And they're kind of like, um, they don't contain everything you can do with, with um, that style of design. But it does have an example of how it can be used. Um, so there's some really useful ones like post-processing, uh, makeup, and things like that. We're going to use the face mask filter. And that's going to show us how to replace this face mask with a texture. So let's go ahead and click on this face mask. And here we're given our um, Spark AR Studio. And we have our preview window here, which we can preview our model. Um, you can pause this or play it at any time. You can also uh, change the model or use your own webcam as um, the model. So it can actually work live as you're working, which is really useful. Um, and what we want to do is we want to replace um, this texture here because this is what's being used for this face mask. So let's go ahead and uh, open up the scene here so we can see where that is. We can see that we have our face tracker and we have our face mesh. And this is where everything is showing up on the um, subject's face, or seemingly on the subject's face. It's shown at just the right angle to work. Um, so let's go ahead and edit this. So what do we have to do? We have to right click here and reveal an explorer. This is gonna show us exactly where that template is. If we right click on this and open it with uh, Photoshop or whatever graphics editing program you prefer, we can see that we have a nice reference point. And if we zoom in a little bit more, we can even see that they've left us some grid lines of where the mouth goes, where the eyes go, um, and where the face ends along this side right here. So it's really easy to go in and edit this. So we're gonna make a quick edit here. Let's go ahead and make a new layer. And let's say instead of this mask, we want to uh, let's just do something super simple so it doesn't take a ton of time. Let's try... Let's try this. And let's just do as if we're like football players. So let's do two lines on the cheek. All right. Um, we can change the color of those lines to whatever team we happen to be like supporting. So we could do like uh, red for like the Niners or uh, gray for the Raiders or whatever. You know, you could leave whatever colors you want. Once you have what you want as the face mask, obviously it's not going to be as simple as that. Just hide the background and you have your mask template. So let's go ahead and save this as a PNG. And you'll see your mask template here. And once we hit save, we can go back and it is live in our scene. So we can now see that um, our uh, face mask is working on our uh, character or subject within the scene. And anything you apply to it, you can actually um, uh, adjust as well with the, uh, with the material. So let's go ahead and go into our face paint material. And you'll see that we have a few different things we can change here, such as the way it's blended and things like that. So we can say if we want it to be metallic or not metallic, whether we want it to be super rough or not rough at all. Um, we can adjust uh, emissions if we want it to be uh, emit a color of some sort. 
And we can adjust the blending mode, um, which can change the way um, it's shown on the person. So for example, we could drop the opacity a little bit so that you see a little bit more skin color underneath. Um, we should say multiply, that one seems to work pretty well. Well, if we leave it at certain numbers, I guess. So there's plenty of ways to adjust the, um, the way it's shown here, including changing the colors and everything right off the back. Um, in case there's any kind of um, transparency within it, it can default to that color. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty great tool and you can combine this with any other effects as well, just by going to um, add an object and you can choose if you wanna add 3D text, um, other 3D objects within the scene, um, and those can all be tracked as well. So there's plenty of ways to um, customize this to make something really cool. Um, but yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. Let me know if it helped you out, and thank you so much for watching. Peace. What? You've never heard of Stream Savers? And you thought PewDiePie was the only YouTuber to make a game? I made a game too, and it's called Stream Savers, and it's available for pre-order right now for $9.99. And that's a great price.